She's one of cinema's great trailblazers. Eusanne Palsy was the first female director to win one of France's prestigious César Awards, the first black director to win Silver Lion at the Venice Film Festival, and the first black woman to have a film produced by a major Hollywood studio. Last year, she was awarded an honorary Oscar for her lifetime achievement, and a retrospective of her films, the first in France, is taking place this month at the Centre Pompidou. Eusanne Palsy, thank you so much for being here. You are living legend. <laughs> Thank you. And when you look back at your career so far, what are you most proud of? <laughs> well, I could have, I could say that I'm proud to be a pioneer, but I don't really like that because I shouldn't have been, you know, a pioneer. I wish that, that more female directors and black directors have been you know, bef before I came on the stage. Yes. And let's go back to the very beginning. You were born on the French island of Martinique. How and why did you decide that you wanted to make movies? When I was 10 years old, you see, I, I was a movie. I loved to go to the movies and I, I was in love with cinema. But uh, very quickly, you know, when I was 12 years old and I started to question the fact that, you know, um, we, black people were not on the screen. <laughs> they were not on the screen or when they were on the screen, it was in very de degraded parts. So, and I decided very quickly, so I want to make film. I, I really would like to be a, a director to tell, to tell our stories, yeah. And your first came, film came out when you were young. A Sugarcane Alley came out in 1983. It's about field workers in Martinique in the 1930s. Let's take a look at a short clip. On nous a vendu pour couper la canne de ces blancs qu'on appelle Becky. Yekrik! Yekrik. J'étais jeune garçon comme toi, Mélouze. Lorsque tous les nègres marrons étaient descendus des mornes avec des bâtons, des coutelas, des fusils, des flambeaux, ils avaient envahi la ville de Saint-Pierre, incendié toutes les habitations. Pour la première fois, les nègres voyaient les blancs trembler s'enfermer dans leur belle maison et mourir. C'est comme ça que l'esclavage est fini. And Uzen, this film swept up the awards that year, including the César for Best First Film and the Silver Lion in Venice, but it very nearly didn't get made. Can you talk about the challenges that you faced? I mean, uh, I, mean I went to a big company like Gaumont, for example, and I thought that you will, François Truffaut called them to introduce me. Uh, but he didn't tell them that I was uh, a young female director and black. And I saw the reaction and it was obvious. He told me this is not the style of the house, the kind of story that they will talk. They didn't want to make it because it was the first time they had a movie with black people in the lead and, and also the subject matter. And you've said that you really experienced racism for the first time in Paris. After your first film, you were invited by Robert Redford to work in Hollywood. Was it different for you there as a black French woman? I have to be honest. I didn't want to go to Hollywood. I had uh, I received a couple of letters from uh, one of the beautiful producer Lucy Fisher from uh, um, Warner Brothers at that time. Uh, but I couldn't say yes because I... At that time, I, I wouldn't trust Hollywood. I, I knew that it was a different way of working. And, uh, and Redford, they sent me letters, and Redford told me, you should go. You need to go and try it. Don't close the door before try it. And I said, well, if he says so, why not? And I, I'll give it a try. And he put me in the plane and sent me to Hollywood to, the, to, the, to Warner Brother. And, uh, and that's the difference. To be very honest, as I was saying earlier, um, I cannot say that my life was really miserable in Hollywood. It was better than I expected. That doesn't mean that it's always been like that for other people, but maybe my personality, my persona, I mean, the way that I deal with things, my approach of, uh, of the, the, the work and, and my relationship to them, they understood that I was not waiting, counting on them to make my career that already started in Europe. So. I had a, 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 a good relationship with all the studios I work with. 
And I was able to make the movie, the movies that I wanted to make and my ways. He respected that. Let's talk about that next movie that you did make. It was also a major one. A Dry White Season is about an Afrikaner man who gets involved in the fight for justice after his gardener's son is murdered by authorities. The cast includes Donald Sutherland and Marlon Brando, who came out of retirement for the role. Let's take a look. I signed it because Captain Stoltz forced me to. This is what he did to me. I'd like to recall Captain Stoltz to the witness box. We see Marlon Brando there. He was nominated for an Oscar for that performance. Uzen Palsi, you are the only female director to have worked with Marlon Brando. You also made this film during the apartheid. It came out in 1989, two years before the apartheid ended. Can you talk a bit about the process of making this movie and releasing it? What was that like? Well, uh, actually, uh, as I said, Robert Redford put me in the plane, and he did well, <laughs> because uh, um, MGM, the studio, um, they welcomed the project after Warner Brother, you know, put it aside. Um, and I, I knew that I wanted Marlon Brando. From day one, I knew that I wanted him to come back uh, to portray an anti-apartheid lawyer. Um, so, and, it, and I had a great producer, Paula Weinstein, who backed me up, was there all the way, and I pay tribute to her, because uh, without her, I know that I wouldn't be able, possibly, to make the movie I really wanted to make. Yes, it's another way of, of working in, in Hollywood, yeah. And when this movie came out uh, afterwards, it was banned, of course, in South Africa. But then after the apartheid ended, you were invited to South Africa by Nelson Mandela to celebrate the first anniversary of his election. What was that like? Well, <laughs> it was amazing because uh, when I, I went to South Africa to, to make some research, to write the script, uh, and to question people, interview them, and I went under, I mean, undercover to Soweto. Uh, anyway, it was a very dangerous time because they were killing people like flies. It, she shot Dulce September in Paris, who was a representative of the ANC. Uh, and there it is, I'm going, two months after that, I'm going in, in, in the lion's, lion's den. Uh, anyway, um, I, I needed to do that to, to have the most accurate story. And Mandela, when he saw the movie after he was released, he wanted to meet the woman, who, as he told me, who made the film, that film that was so accurate. And I spent, he invited me and I spent a week with him. We talked about so many things. And <laughs> I really, truly enjoyed that, that genius. And the cinema industry continues to struggle with diversity. There were no women nominated for Best Director at this year's Césars, for example, though Alice Diop did win for Best Film, uh, for Best First Film. Are things changing, do you think, for the next generation of women and minority filmmakers? I think so. I think that, um, yes, you know, as, when you are a pioneer, you have nobody around. You, you, you know, you, you, you pave the, the road for the upcoming you know, directors, and I'm glad that I was able to, my fight, I would say in two words that my fight to, to get where I got was worth it because so many black female directors and even male directors, young directors, they, you know, they recognized the work that I did and they, they, they thanked me for all that fight and, uh, I made it possible for them, in a few words, yes. Last year you were awarded, as we've mentioned, an honorary Oscar for Lifetime Achievement. You've said that you felt hurt a little bit, that France didn't talk about that more. Since then, though, you were given a medal at the National Assembly, and now you have this retrospective. Do you feel like you're starting to get more recognition in France? <laughs> well, you know, um, I say that because, you know, you can have, as I, I used to say that, you can get many awards from all over the world. But you see, it's, um, it's like, a, for example, a child who does 
very well at the school, gets a lot of, you know, awards, a lot of uh, um, pre, you know, awards. Yeah, prizes. Yeah. And, um, but the most important one, one of the most important one is from the, the parents, the father, the mother saying, oh my God, they recognize what you did. So that's the way I felt. I felt like, well, you know, if you have uh, at home, there is no recognition of the work that you did. You don't understand why he did that way when the, the entire world is praising you and loves your movies and talked about the importance of what you did, you see. I'm so glad you're finally getting that recognition. Uh, Yuzan, we ask all of our guests to highlight another piece of recent work, and you've chosen the documentary Un Pont Au-dessus de l'Océan, A Bridge Over the Ocean by uh, Francis Fourcou. Tell me just in a couple words why you picked it. Oh, I mean, when I saw that movie, I, have to, I will be very honest with you, I was moved to tears. It's amazing, amazing because everything that you learn, because it's a quest for memory, you know, if Aimé Césaire, that very famous uh, poet and a philosopher from Martinique and tragedian, he used to say, if you don't know who you are, how can you face the future? How can you really uh, uh, fight for your life, for your future? You need to know where you came from, because this is fundamental. And that's what the, that, what the movie is about, that relationship, you know, be, be, between, you know, that uh, uh, Amerindian tribe and Occitanie, and, and I was very moved by to see those people's face, the kids learning their language and, and that quest for memory. That's what my work is about as well. It's such an important message. You have so many wonderful lessons. Uzan Palsi, thank you again so much. It's been a real honor. Uh, a reminder that a retrospective of her films is showing at the Centre Pompidou here in Paris this month. Do seek out her work wherever you are in the world. We'll end with a look at that documentary, A Bridge Over the Ocean by Francis Fourcou. Thank you so much for watching. There's news coming up after this. Never ask, and they never tried to teach me Osage. It is part of our sovereignty and our inalienable human rights to be able to speak our language. We know what it's like to be gripped by terror, and this was the most emotional visit for me.